Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May peace, mercy, and blessing of God be upon you. You know, I'm Muslim now. I fast, I pray, I believe in all the prophets, Jesus, Moses, Noah, Abraham, Muhammad. I believe they all came with the same message and creed, which was just worship one God, a message of monotheism. You know, I used to be Christian. Hmm. You know, me being Christian, I wonder what it would have been like if I had read the Bible and found out that there were contradictions in it and found out that there were verses which were missing in different versions of the Bible. Hmm. And I wonder what it would have been like if me as a Christian happened to pick up the Quran and read some verses from there. Well, hope you're going to enjoy this video because we're going to go back in time now and meet me as a Christian reading those verses. <laughs> What a beautiful day. Great day to come home and sit down and, hey, you know what? I'm going to read some biblical scripture. That's a good idea. Hmm, hey, someone put this NRSV Bible on my King James. And it's got a bunch of numbers in there, too. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I wonder what, what's going on here with my Bible. Hmm, huh. you know what? Let's turn to number one to find out exactly what's happening here. Matthew 17, verse 21. How be it this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. Hmm, I guess they're talking about a devil there. I wonder what it says in the New Revised Standard Version. Hmm, Matthew 17, yep. Yeah. 18, 19, 20, 22. Huh? What happened? Where's 21? It's been taken outside of this Bible. That's strange. I know there's different versions of the same Bible, the translation, but why did they take away this verse? Hmm, strange. Oh well. Huh. Well, wait a minute. Let's let's look at 18, Matthew 18, verse 11. For the Son of Man is come to save that which was lost. You know, that's what I would believe as a Christian. The Son of Man is come to save which was lost. Let's, let's find out what it says inside the New Revised Standard Edition. Matthew 18. Let's go to verse 11. It's 9, verse 10. Huh? What? In heaven their angels continually see the face of my Father in heaven. What do you think if a shepherd has a hundred sheep? Wait a minute. They, they skipped over the verse. They removed it. They took it out. What are they doing? Why would this happen? Why would they remove a verse from the Bible? I thought the King James was the Word of God. This is really strange. This, this is showing that some of the things I'm having are corrupted. This doesn't make any sense. Hey, let's, let's go to number two here. I mean, this can't happen for all these verses. I mean, it's, it's impossible, right? I mean, I grew up knowing that the, the Bible is the Word of God. I mean, who would mark up my Bible like this and show these verses? Ver chapter 23 in Matthew, verse 14, okay. Oh, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, O hypocrites! For ye devour widows' houses... Yeah, I mean, they do all this evil stuff, and for a pretense, make long prayer. Therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. This is a big, you know, a big thing Jesus is saying here towards these scribes and Pharisees. Let's find out what they translated inside the New Revised Standard Edition here. All right, let's go to number 2, and 2314. Okay, it's right at the top here. It says 2314 on the top of my New Revised Standard Version. I don't know if you can see that there. But, huh, wait a minute. Verse 13, verse 15, where's verse 14? This is so weird. Why would the New Revised Standard Version remove verses from my Bible? Why would they take out verses from the Word of God? If this is the Word of God, it doesn't make any sense. Let's go to number three. You know what? I, I really don't know what's going on here, but we're going to find out here. We're going to find out. That's, that's, that's for sure, you know? Let's look at John 5, 4. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in and was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. Yeah, you know, this is a miracle, right? This is a miracle. I, I know that. So let's look at John 5 and let's look for 4. Hmm. Huh. Where is it? What happened to it? Why is it not here? John 3. John 6. In these lame, invalid, blind, lame, paralyzed, ill for 38 years, when Jesus saw him... Wait a minute. 
They're, they're skipping over the verse, verse 4. John 5, 4. Why is it gone? Why was it taken away? Why did they take this from the Word of God? I thought this is supposed to be the Word of God. What's going on here? Why are, why are these things happening? Why are verses being removed? This doesn't make any sense at all. You know? Hmm. It seems that... I guess they... Hey! What's on the back of this? My King James. John, chapter 7, verse 53, to chapter 8, verse 11. Gone? Taken out? Removed because of corruption? And Luke 23, 17? What's going on here, you know? Ah... Uh, it seems that the Bible was corrupt, and they removed the verses. They took them away. They destroyed them. So strange. Hey, what's this? The Bible, the Quran, and Science by Maurice Bouquet. What's, what's going on here? Hey, what's this page here? Table of the distribution of the Yahvist and sacerdotal texts in chapters 1 to 11 in Genesis. The first figure shows the chapter. The second figure shows what they used in writing it. Wait a minute, I thought in the Old Testament, I thought they, they just had one, one scripture that they would use and they'd translate it and, and we'd have the Word of God here. But, but according to this, it's saying chapter 1, phrase 1, to chapter 2, phrase 4, is the sacerdotal text. And then from chapter 2, verse 4, to chapter 4, verse 26, is the Yahavist test, text. And you know what? It goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, the whole way down. How is that? Why would they use two different sources to write one book? Don't they have the original? Don't they have the scriptures? Isn't this the word of God? What's going on here? Hmm. You know, that's strange. I mean, I thought Christianity was the right religion. I thought we have the word of God that doesn't change. That's eternal and absolute. But it seems that they've ch done a lot more than just change the translation from the King James to the New Revised Standard Version. It seems they've even re removed some verses. I mean, this must mean the Bible is corrupted. You know, I, I never thought about that before. Hmm. I wonder what I should be now. I mean, I can't just be an atheist. I know atheists, they don't worship God, they don't thank God, they don't even believe in God. And I believe in God. I mean, there must be a God. So what can I be? Hey, wait a minute. What's this? Someone put a Quran, a new translation by Abdel Halim, Oxford's World Classics. Interesting. Let's take a look here. You know, why not, right? I know the Bible's corrupted. I know they've changed the verses. And why not try and see if Islam is, is the right path? I mean, I've heard about it before. Uh, let's see here. The chapter number 2, verse 130 says, Who but a fool would forsake the religion of Abraham? Well, hey, I believe in Abraham. And I, I wouldn't forsake his religion. It continues on. We have chosen him in this world, and he will rank among the righteous in the hereafter. Yeah, for sure. I believe he certainly will. His Lord said to him, Devote yourself to me. Abraham replied, I devote myself to the Lord of the universe. And commanded his sons to do the same. As did Jacob. He said, My sons, God has chosen your religion for you, so make sure you devote yourself to him to your dying moment. You know, I would do that too. I mean, of course, if, if you have a, a God you're worshipping, I mean, it's, it's only right to, to tell others to worship him. And... It says here, Abraham, I mean, was on the right path. He was righteous. And I believe that wholeheartedly. It says here, verse 135, they say, become Jews or Christians, and you will be rightly guided. Huh. You know, I, I used to believe that. It says, say, Prophet Muhammad, no. Ours is the religion of Abraham, the upright, who did not worship any god besides God. You know, that's right. In the Old Testament... And in the Quran, you know, Abraham doesn't worship Jesus. He doesn't worship any other partner besides God. He shuns idols. You know, this is great. I mean, it's giving a clear description of Abraham. And it's saying here that, that the Muslims are following the religion of Abraham. This is, this is really great and interesting. Let's, let's keep going here and see what else this book says. Huh. Chapter number 5, verse 15. It says here, people of the book. Well, that must mean the people of the Bible, the, the Jews and the Christians. Our messenger has come to make things clear to you, much of what you have kept hidden of the scripture, and to overlook much of what you have done. A light has now come to you from God, and a scripture making things clear, with which God guides to the ways of peace. Those who follow what pleases Him, bringing them from darkness out into light, by His will, and guiding them to the straight path. Hey, that's great. You know, I want to be guided to the straight path. I mean, I know the Bible has been corrupted. I mean, I just saw that in reading it. I know they've changed it. 
This is really interesting what it's saying here. Oh, hey, wait a minute. It goes on in, in verse 17 to say, Those who say God is the Messiah, the Son of Mary, are defying the truth. You know what? That, that's right. How can God become a man? I mean, that doesn't make any sense, does it? Hmm. Let's continue on here. Verse 5, or sorry, chapter 5, verse 73. I wonder what it says. Those people who say that God is the third of three are defying the truth. There is only one God. Yeah, I believe there's only one God. I believe exactly what Abraham believed. That, you know, you just worship God alone. And I know Jesus said that was the greatest commandment, to worship God alone with a partner. So, it seems that this, this Quran is really going along with my beliefs. and It's really nice. I, I never thought about this before. It says in, in chapter 15, called Al-Hijr, it says, oh, God is talking about something here in verse 9. We have sent down the Qur'an ourselves, and we ourselves will guard it. Cool. This is God's promise saying He's going to guard the Qur'an. You know what? I'm going to find out if, if the Qur'an in Arabic, the original recitation that was revealed and written down, if it's still the same, because I've always heard it's the same. And from what I know, everyone, and all the research that's been done on this, it's the exact same recitation that came to the Prophet Muhammad, that we have nowadays, 1400 years later. This is really interesting, because it's saying here, God is promising to always keep the original Arabic Qur'an, the original, the original recitation. That's really amazing and great. Hmm. Hey, what does it say here? The last one. Chapter 112, Purity of Faith. Hmm. In the name of God, the Lord of mercy, the giver of mercy. Hmm. These are great descriptions about God. Say, He is God the One, God the Eternal. He begot no one, nor was he begotten. No one is comparable to him. You know, I believe that wholeheartedly. God is only one and he's eternal. And he doesn't, you know, form inside his creation as a child or a donkey or anything. And he himself wasn't created because I know God was the originator of all the creation. And no one is comparable to him. You know, that's right. How could anyone ever compare Jesus or any other man or even Muhammad? I guess no one could ever compare Muhammad to God. Peace be upon him. And no one could ever compare Jesus to God. Peace be upon them all. Hey, there's, there's one here that's, that's pink. It says here in verse 82 of chapter number 4, Will they not think about this Qur'an? If it had been from anyone other than God, they would have found much inconsistency in it. Amazing. I'm going to find out more about this Qur'an and make sure that this is the truth and the true religion. Because what I've read here now, it's promising. There's no contradictions inside the Qur'an. And also, that God is going to protect this. As I know from all the people I've ever talked to, and what I've read on the internet, that they have the original Arabic Qur'an, the original recitation, for the last 1400 years. You know, I'm so glad that I found this translation, and I'm going to look now and see if this is God's true religion, and see if I should become a Muslim. Because from what this is saying, I believe in it, and I think it's the best. Alhamdulillah, all praise is to God that God did guide me to Islam, the true religion. You will not find anywhere in the world, in any religion, the same scripture for over 1400 years, as is in Islam. The same revelation which was given to the angel Gabriel from Allah, from God, and then to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, may the peace and blessings be upon him, you will not find anywhere else in the world this same thing as Islam has, all praise be to God. You know, Abraham, said to his dad, why do, why do you worship these statues? Abraham the prophet, peace be upon him. And his dad said, well, our, you know, our fathers worship these things. How can you say bad things about our, our gods? Our fathers worship them, and we're going to worship them. And that's it. And you see, the thing is, if you yourself are saying to you, well, you know, I was raised Christian, I was raised a Buddhist, and that's how I'm going to die. No matter what you say to me, that's how I'm going to die. You can't be this ignorant. No one can be this ignorant. We must open our heart to God's guidance and ask God sincerely for guidance. And really I hope that everyone who sees this video is guided to Islam the best way of life that there is.